he was not clear. But just to say that um, we at this particular time will have 10 minutes, and the 10 minutes we avoid comments, but rather raise questions for, for clarity. If there is something that he said which we feel we did not understand properly, we go ahead and ask so that he may uh, clarify for, for us to understand it uh, better. So only questions for clarity and that will be for 10 minutes and then we will um, pass the back on to the next uh, speaker. Any questions? Please, by our friend from uh, Egypt. Because you mentioned that uh, in Nairobi was Muslims. Uh, just, just a moment. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, how do we, uh, how do you do evangelism? You said uh, we we, show, we will not give up evangelism or doubt, but you said, but how? So my question is how. <coughs> Any other question? That's question one. Evangelism, how? Any, any person? Please, yes. Can you say, just say your name and... Uh, I am Adam Shaba. And uh, um, I want uh, an answer towards, uh, or a clarification towards the fact that the, the church historically was a Catholic. Uh, up to the 15th century. Um, I think from the answer of course to up to that point, I, I need clarification. <laughs> um, uh, would, would, you, would, would you like you to, to, to restate it? Yeah, the point is, if the, if, I mean, what I think I had was the church was Catholic up to the time of Reformation. And so, at what point? <laughs> Why was it Catholic? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. And yeah, the, it's clear you say that at what time did the church become moved from apostolic church to the Catholic church? You are the one saying that. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm helping you to clarify. I hope I've not, I've not uh, misrepresented you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, nice. Mercy and then. Um, uh, yes, Magister, and then uh, Dan. The three questions, and then we, I think we will give uh, Abishab a chance. Abishab, the word you say is my prophet. Um, I mean, if we don't want that history to continue, how do you respond to the fact that when people are trying to revitalize their churches, they talk about we are going to have crusades? And how does that pan out in Nigeria when we hear that? My question is, how is the present situation in Nigeria? Because I have, we have, we are going to start Nigeria, I think the and Muslims, especially in the most part of Nigeria. And uh, also I heard that Christians cooperated and established a kind of uh, unity to cooperate with how far is true. Thank you. Done. Uh, yes, thank you, Archbishop. Um, in your speech, you mentioned, according to Vatican Council II, that there was a uh, determined silence regarding the Prophet of Islam. And so I'm wondering now, have there been developments within the Catholic Church regarding attitudes, uh, acceptance of, definition of, etc., etc., the Prophet of Islam? Thank you. Um, Agnisha? One first one. Uh, the, the person asking about how the situation lies in Nigeria, if you are going to be here until the end of the session, there's a whole session on that. And I think Father Kuka, where is he? You, you have to, to see him is not easy, he's so small. Uh, Father <laughs> You will hear him. You may not see him easily. You will hear him. He talks very well. He will talk about the situation in Nigeria. What you, have, what you heard about efforts at collaboration between Christians and Muslims in Nigeria is true. The only question is, uh, is it only what a few things happening on top? 
how does it affect the grassroots and is it even a, a, a how far is it agreed both among Muslims and among Christians those are issues but you know you can't wait till everybody agrees before you move if you do that then it will be until the, the kingdom comes but Father Kuka will uh, explain it further for you. Thank you. And uh, your last question about silence on Mohammed, uh, put it in the context of uh, you must have been in various, uh, if you've been to different conferences where churches try to, to fashion policies that they are going to give out, you are often very careful how you say what you say. And here, I don't know what the account problem will be. <laughs> but as at that time, in 1965, to say that they also believe that God has spoken through the Prophet Muhammad would be to make a statement which could not be considered a Catholic theological position, even today, because it, 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 it brings up the whole question of how, to what extent can you call Muhammad a prophet? Is he a true prophet? Even my church, I don't think there's a unanimity on that, unless we start distinguishing between different kinds of prophets, and say, for example, even Archbishop Onayeko is a prophet. <laughs> In that case, Muhammad is a prophet, may the peace of Allah be upon him. So, does that answer your question? But you can see the way the fact is said that Muslims believe that God has spoken to men means that there is a revelation. Who brought it? To what extent? They leave that as a question that will be discussed later. And in, in uh, subsequent church documents, Muhammad has been specifically mentioned. Because you can't talk of Islam without mentioning the name of uh, Muhammad. Um, anti mercy again terminologies and the words that you use and when my when young people say we are going to start a crusade and they want me to come and give the opening uh, remarks or even to start with mass most of them don't link the word crusade with the history that I described here for them, crusade is just another word for when you go out on evangelistic manifestation. So they just use a word very loosely. They don't go into the whole idea of the kind of emotions that the word crusade will evoke. In the minds of people who are thinking of their crusade, and definitely the word crusade in English derives from that uh, uh, wonderful, glorious, but uh, glorious, but uh, uh, unfortunate historical episode uh, of crusade. As you know, the word crusade is from cruciata, which comes from cross, crux. The, the cross that was put on the shield of those who went to fight, to show that they are fighting, holding the cross of Christ. Now, of course, there are many ways of fighting. And whatever fight you do, you must do it in the name of the cross of Christ. Already went back to Constantinus in hoc senior vinces. But if you, I think on the level of us who are leaders, we will need to simply <laughs> uh, 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 educate our young people who go on crusades, that whatever you do, let it not be to go and be killing others. As you know, the same thing is used, is comes in the use of the word jihad. And you have many Muslims who are in uh, positions of, uh, of responsibility like me, and who also have a similar sense of not uh, raking up old wounds, asking that we have to be, uh, to be sure we understand what you mean by jihad. And you find a lot of people making all kinds of explanation of what the real meaning of jihad is. And they try to explain it in such a way that the real jihad is not carrying the, carrying the spear and killing people, but that the real jihad starts from the heart of each one. This, that is, simply means struggle. That's what I hear from many of my Muslim uh, uh, friends. And so jihad simply means the struggle you carry on to make yourself a better Muslim, and also the struggle you have to undertake to spread the Islamic faith, which is a duty of every Muslim. How you spread the 
faith. Some people think the best way is by the, by the sword. Others think it is a, 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 by other peaceful means. I don't know what answer you are expecting uh, from me, but I do not think you.